Welcome to Zoom In, Zoom Out, where we take an in-depth look at how news from Taiwan is impacting the wider world. I'm Sally Jensen. For many around the world, the word Formosa now stands for rampant environmental destruction. One of Taiwan's biggest conglomerates, Formosa Plastics, has been facing lawsuits from residents in Louisiana, Texas, and Ha Tien province in Vietnam for their factory's massive amounts of pollution. Protesters from the affected areas have been coming to Taiwan for Formosa Plastics' annual general meeting, bringing their demands directly to the doorstep of the shareholders. I was there at the protest. Formosa! Formosa! Shen of Taiwan! An international group of activists are in Taiwan on the doorstep of one of the world's biggest plastics companies to call out its alleged abuses. The Formosa group is accused of environmental racism and disregarding human rights in these activists' countries. In 2019, a U.S. court awarded $50 million in penalties to Texas residents affected by Formosa's pollution. There was a similar legal battle in Vietnam, where waste from Formosa plastics is devastating marine life and damaging the livelihood of fishing communities. Activists involved in all these cases are now here in Taipei. We don't want to see that kind of human rights violation. So we're here all together. We want that to be stopped. We want Formosa to stop. Today we're diving into Formosa Plastics environmental impact in Vietnam and to find out more we're joined now by Nancy Boy from the US currently in Portugal. Now Nancy is an activist and a vice president of justice for Formosa victims. She represents thousands of Vietnamese victims who have been impacted by the Formosa Plastics massive pollution in Vietnam. Nancy welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. So could you tell us your story from the top? How did Formosa Plastics come to be in Vietnam and build a steel plant there? Well, according to the record, uh, Formosa intended to build this uh, steel factory in Taiwan, but they were having some problem with the environmental law there. So they moved everything to Vietnam uh, in 2008 because Vietnam is cheap labor, cheap land, and also the lack of uh, environmental law. Uh, in uh, 2016, uh, Formosa had team create the biggest environmental disaster. This tragic event impact the life of five million people in four provinces, particularly those who work in the fishing industry. It was considered the worst environment disaster in Vietnam history and shook the whole world due to its impact on the environment and sea life, according to the Vietnamese government. 179,000 people lost their job at the resort. But this is the, the worst, to me, a disaster. Thank you. I, I would just like to perhaps discuss exactly what caused this problem? What, what kind of environmental pollution was Formosa creating from its steel plant in Ha Tien? They dumped about over 100 um, metric tons of toxic waste, including cyanide, um, chlor, um, mercury, and other heavy iron. It killed about over 100 metric tons of fish. The fish died and flowing along the coastline of 250 kilometers. That put the fish, that killed the fishery industry of Vietnam, put people in out of job, and then also polluted a large area. That also create problem of people eating the seafood, a contaminated seafood. They were sick and hospitalized. One of the divers died because they he died in too deep of the ocean. Did the local community ever have some kind of discussion with Formosa? Did Formosa acknowledge the wrong that it had done? After about three months of denial, over 100 uh, scientists, uh, local scientists, and also some international scientists come in and do an um, examine, and they concluded that Formosa at fault. At that time, they admit 
in front of the public that they did that, and then they right away offered to pay $500 million without any study for a real damage. And then the money they pay, they don't pay to the victim, but pay to the government. More like they buy the protection from the Vietnam government. Was there a wider public reaction to this uh, environmental destruction? At first, the uh, people want to know, but the government of Vietnam try to cover up. They have to go on protests, of course, peaceful protests. Those protests were being cracked down by the government. The protesters were arrested, put in prison, beaten, some uh, severe and some uh, have um, uh, damaged uh, till today. And what made you want to take action once you saw all of this happening? Well, in the beginning, we are in the United States, so we raised the money to send to help, you know, buy food and buy, you know, belonging here and there to help them. But after we saw Formosa and the government of Vietnam run around the victim, so we know that uh, there will be a long haul to deal with this problem. We form a non-profit organization. We call it Justice for Formosa Victim in 2017. Plus the victim have no means to uh, speak for themselves or do anything that help themselves, so they cry out for help. The Catholic Church in Vietnam, led by Bishop Nguyen Thai Hợp and all the priests in the affected area, they made a trip uh, out of Vietnam. They came to United Nations, other country in Europe, and finally they come to the U.S., and the bishop and all the priests met with us, myself and my group of friends. And they tell us that they cannot do anything in Vietnam. They want us to help them to bring the case to, uh, to outside of Vietnam. You know, Formosa is a Taiwanese company, so I have to deal with international uh, jurisdiction. So that's how we form ourselves and help the, the victim. Thank you very much, Nancy. And as we saw from the beginning, Formosa Plastics' transgressions aren't limited to Vietnam. It's a serial polluter around the world with a long history. Taiwan Plus reporter Bing Wang has this story. Diane Wilson is a fourth-generation fisherwoman. Two years ago, she led a group lawsuit that eventually reached a 50 million US dollar settlement and a promise of zero discharge with the Texas Formosa Plastics plant. The plant was set up in 1983 in a small town called Point Comfort. It had been discharging pollutants for decades before a U.S. federal judge ruled it a serial offender. There is a huge amount of plastic and pellets that has been in the bay. It goes clear across the bay when we, uh, you know, right now we, we have uh, workers that are still testing, taking photographs on the shore, clear across the bay from Formosa and the pellets and the powder show up every day. You also met other activists and other plaintiffs uh, from around the world. Uh, could you tell us how you got into contact with them, uh, how you formed these relationships with them, and what similarities uh, you felt that you had with these other activists? So the lawsuit in Taiwan, we uh, collaborate with the NGO in Taiwan, the lawyer in Taiwan. And then I was introduced to Diane Wilson. She deals with with Formosa um, factory in south of Texas, and we live in the same state. From her home to my home, about three and a half uh, hour long drive. And then <laughs> I call her right away when I get back to the state and we get together. And we found out that similarly, Formosa treat the victim, uh, their victim very much the same. Uh, instead of uh, helping them and put them, uh, paying them and put them back in the normal situation before Formosa harmed them, they try to uh, deny it. They try to cover up and they try to push a victim away. Uh, same thing. And it really touches on a human rights issue. Um, I think you mentioned when you came here to Taiwan that 
Uh, there has been instances of people leaving Vietnam because of this uh, problem and then even that uh, Essex lorry in 2019, the tragic deaths of the Vietnamese found in that lorry in the UK, they came from the province. Is this leading to uh, problems with human trafficking and other human rights abuses worldwide? Correct, um, because people are out of jobs, so they have to find a way to support their family. So they move to, uh, they go find a job in the um, southern of the provinces, or they have to put up their house to collateral to have some money to pay for the broken fee to go to outside of Vietnam, like in Taiwan, in South Korea, in Japan, and other um, country in Europe. And, and, and embarking into so, uh, some very tragic, like 39 people died in the um, border of, Engl of uh, England, and uh, 35 of those were in the four provinces affected by Formosa disaster. And this is really the devastation of entire communities, entire livelihoods. Um, I would like to ask, what are your, you and your community doing right now? Uh, are people leaving this area of Vietnam because of the devastation that happened there? Well, um, in Vietnam right now, the area that Formosa is still working, uh, still have uh, activity there. The pollution area were not clean. The seawater were not clean, but no way we can prove that because they don't allow anybody to come in to test. Even we offer for the fee to bring the independent uh, scientists come in, it will deny us so many times. Who do you think really is responsible for taking the further action on this? Is it, you know, the company Formosa Plastics itself? Is it the government of Taiwan? Is it the government of Vietnam? Is it ordinary people? Um, what can we do? Uh, how do you see this process moving forward? Like you know, um, Vietnam is the smaller um, version of China. So their environment, I mean, their record of human rights, uh, you know, is nobody can beat that. We cannot, you know, expect anything from those uh, government. Um, for Formosa, of course, like I said, they buy the protection from Vietnam. They need to change their attitude. They need to take their responsibility. They need to take care of their victim. Because we know that Taiwan have um, the environment problem with other foreign country before, and they, their victim being taken care of. I'm talking about the RCA case uh, in Taiwan. Uh, so I think that um, Taiwan uh, government can do better. They need to come up with the law that uh, they need to hold the responsibility on the Taiwanese company, go to the poorer country or the country that governed by a dictator, a communist. People will, see, will think that Taiwan allowed this uh, very powerful company go out there to break Taiwan law and to break the international law to make a profit. And that really humiliates not only Formosa company, but also Taiwan. So I think that um, the Taiwan government can do a lot better. Okay, thank you very much, Nancy. I, I really appreciate your insights and thank you for making time with us today. You are very welcome. Thanks for having me. This has been Zoom In, Zoom Out. You can find out more stories from Taiwan Plus by following us on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.